all jokes intended, there's a lady in the Bible with an absolutely beautiful name, awe-inspiring name, Dorcas. Dorcas. My wife would never let us name a kid that. I'd encourage you not to do so, but the Bible also calls her Tabitha. And she only appears in the Bible one time, but when she does, not only is there going to be a miracle in her life, there's something subtle and beautiful that is stated of her that ought to beg this question of ourselves and inside of us. It says in Acts chapter 9, verse 36, that in Joppa there was a disciple named Tabitha, and her Greek name was Dorcas. Beautiful. Again, she was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died. Jump down to verse 39. It says this, that Peter went with them to that house, and when he arrived there, he was taken upstairs to the room. And all of the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. I have a question for you, and I actually want you to ponder this as you go about today. What are you known for? Could you imagine if your life got one sentence in the entire Bible, not just a miracle, like one thing that described you, and what it actually said was what it said of Tabitha, which was she was always doing good, she was helping the poor, she's surrounded by societal outcasts, and then she's showing Peter once she's gone, all they're showing Peter once she's gone, all the clothes that she made the widows of that time. I gotta tell you, my son, who's six months old now, spent his first three days of life in the NICU. And if somebody would've asked me at our church, we wanna start a quilting ministry, I would've kinda giggled at that and been like, you know what, dude, I'm confessing. I would've giggled and said, do it on your own time. We're not gonna pump it from the stage. We're not putting it in any bulletin. And I probably undervalued those small things. But it's interesting, when I was holding my son Somebody came to me with a blanket in the NICU from a little Baptist church in Roseville, California. And I'll never forget it. I'm holding him there. I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm not sure what's wrong with him in that moment. And there's a little card in there. And it says, this was knit together with every stitch, nothing but needle, yarn, and prayer that we prayed with every stitch. We don't know where these blankets go. We don't know what you're going through. We just want you to know that we knew God did, and we were praying for you. And all of a sudden, that stuff really, really mattered. So I couldn't help when I read about Tabitha making clothes, others making quilts. Can I just give you this piece of advice? Serve the world with your skills. I don't know how to make quilts and I don't know how to make clothes, but Tabitha makes clothes, Paul makes tents, Jesus works with his hands. Just use the tools that you have to serve the people in the world who don't have the same tools and posture them as a servant, whether you're a personal trainer or you make beautiful lattes, you're a real estate agent or a broker, a teacher or a plumber, whatever you do and your skill is, so serve others who don't have it. And can I just say this, Christians? I think all of us need some space, if we can, vocationally, to do what we do pro bono where we do it without money, where of course we have to make money, of course we have to put food on the table, of course we have to take care of our kids, but finding some way that that can be pure service to others who don't have the same skills. So I'll repeat this, what are you known for? And say you don't know, ask some people in your life, and if you don't even like what they say, maybe you do, but maybe you don't, then dedicate yourself to change and being known for whatever you desire that change to be. Serve with the skills God gave you and the skills that you have cultivated. They may have more impact on the world and more impact on others than you know.